name is Meg Gebhard. I'm a faculty member at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Um, I've been there for 18 years. Um, and I do work in uh, second language acquisition, second language literacies. I work with teachers, um, very, very committed to teachers' professional development. And how I got to being in um, my work is I, I started out um, as a less than successful student in high school. If anyone ever said I would go into teaching and teacher education, they'd be rather surprised. Um, but when I graduated, I, I was really interested in language and I ended up studying linguistics. Um, I was really fascinated by how language constructs ideas and people's personal relationships. Um, but I still struggled as a writer, um, really struggled as a writer. Um, and over time, I worked very, very hard at developing sort of an ability to read and write academically. Pretty hard one, um, because I really hadn't been provided with that in high school, um, growing up, or even in elementary school. Um, I also um, did a majored in German um, and ended up, I don't know why I majored in German exactly. There wasn't, um, there wasn't a particular reason. I have a German last name, but that really wasn't it. Um, I think I just liked um, some of the history of around um, um, the Renaissance and European history. I found a lot of that kind of fascinating, but that really had didn't really do much um, in terms of my career trajectory, except um, when I returned from a year abroad um, and having had the experience of reading and writing in another language, in another culture, um, which was pretty formative. Um, I was really not prepared. I could go work for a bank maybe and do German translation or something, but I really not interested in that at all. And my mother, uh, who was an English teacher, said, why don't you get a degree in teaching English as a second language? And um, you could either teach, you get a license, you could teach in schools, or you know, you could travel. And the last thing I ever wanted to do was to be a teacher and go back to high school, a place that I didn't find particularly <laughs> stimulating. Um, but I took her advice and I thought I'll get a degree in teaching English and then I can travel and, and that appealed to me. Um, and along that route I met a, um, a number of people, really important people who really shaped my um, conception of what is language, what is learning, and the power of designing really, really good curriculum instruction. And I discovered I really liked designing curriculum and instruction. Um, and I worked with some really great people, Karen Johnson, for example, Don Liu, who's a significant person in reading, and Cheryl Spalding, who introduced me to, um, to Vygotsky. And that was really also very transformative, this idea that language constructs ideas and um, thoughts, and what, I what I've come to know and who I am is really shaped by a social context rather than some sort of individual um, individual differences. Um, so with those tools, um, I did my student teaching at a large urban high school. And um, if I didn't like school um, and found it alienating, um, what these students were getting um, in an ESL program was really shocking, really shocking. It was tracking, um, lack of access to materials, um, teachers who were woefully unprepared, dedicated people, very caring, but students were really not being taught to read, write, and think about powerful ideas. Um, and whatever anger fueled me as an adolescent in high school, now for <laughs> sort of fueled a career in trying to work with kids and teachers around reading and writing about powerful ideas. Um, so I did that, and then I ended up teaching um, in a middle school um, outside of math, sort of urban Boston sprawl kind of area. Um, and when I was hired, the, the with no teaching experience and a lot of theory, a lot of theory, um, the principal counted off 130 names of kids she couldn't pronounce, and um, said, "You you go figure this out." Um, and it really said, you have about a week. And within a week, I was supposed to figure out how to run a school within a school. And then she handed me the names of two bilingual teachers, and she said, make their schedules. 
<laughs> Needless to say, my first year of doing that was rather a big mess. Um, but again, this commitment to really thinking about um, it was it was scary because I had I had plenty of freedom to to really make a lot of mistakes, which is unfortunate for kids. But I also had the freedom to make substantive changes in, in what I, I wanted to do. And, and I had a really good master's degree program, so I had a lot of ideas to work with. Um, so, you know, I continued to design curriculum instruction. I used a lot of the ideas that I, I really was so thankful to get in a rigorous master's program. But at the end, I, I don't think I really um, intuitively had some ideas about teaching, reading, and writing, but I really had the sense that there was so much more going on in schools um, that made it hard for me and hard for kids. And so I decided to do a doctorate and went to Berkeley um, and again worked with some phenomenal people. Um, and the questions that guided me into a doctoral program are the questions that have continued to shape what I'm doing. Um, and, and shape the book that I've just written, which is really a book I've been thinking about for, you know, I don't know, years. Um, so the questions really are, what is language? What is it? Um, how is it? What is learning? Um, and, and how do we think about social change in urban schools when we're teaching students to read and write? about really challenge, challenging academic texts for reasons that they ca they care about and they can invest in. Um, and that really has shaped um, shaped the book um, and the focus of the book and how I've organized it. So what's the title of your book? This is the title's rather long. Um, and you know it's sort of hard to get all the words in there that <laughs> that sort of get to what it what the book is about. But the title is I have to actually look. <laughs> it's teaching and researching ELLs um, in the con disciplinary literacies in the context of school reform. So it's here you can see the emphasis of what I was just talking about in terms of disciplinary literacies, learning to read and write, not just in everyday ways, which are certainly very very powerful, especially in in, in your in students' home language pure vernacular, the wide range of, of linguistic variation we all use every day to get really important work done. But when you're starting to read and write in um, literature on grade level, read and write about history, science, and in mathematics, um, that really is a fundamentally a different kind of way of using language that extends far beyond teaching vocabulary. Uh, so that is the part of the book about teaching and researching ELL's disciplinary literacies. The other part of the title is doing this in a context of school reform. Anyone who's been teaching for a long time knows, I mean I started out teaching where I had an enormous amount of freedom and, and honestly I could do whatever I wanted and there was you know, there's a, that's a double, there's some positives to that, but certainly some negatives as well. Um, with standardization and accountability, no child left behind, Common Core state standards, um, new standards placed on teachers, um, we really are, teachers are working in a fundamentally different context today than they were certainly when I started teaching. Um, so I really wanted to bring in how those forces shape what's possible for teachers, often in some positive ways, but often in very negative ways. So Common Core, for example, um, really highlights the need for all kids to read and write in disciplines um, and has really sort of up the ante um, in some ways that are, can be positive, um, but teachers aren't being prepared for that work. Um, what is the difference between a narrative and an explanation and an argument? How do you actually teach kids argumentative? You could do the writing process certainly, but there's a way in which teachers, through no fault of their own, don't really understand how language works in the text that they routinely ask kids to read and write. And as a result, in the research that I've been doing for, you know, 20 some odd years in urban schools, they often don't know how to respond to writing. Um, so teachers will write, you know, spend hours, dedicated hours, writing all over students' texts, and then the students really don't know what to do with the, that feedback. Um, so the next part of the title, to continue with this long title, is to do this um, using systemic functional linguistics. Um, and this is a theory of language that really explains how how language works. Um, how does language make meaning in these types of texts that teachers routinely ask kids to read and write? 
So that's a very long answer to my title. Um, it's uh, teaching and re researching ELLs, uh, disciplinary literacies in the context of school reform, um, really with SFL, systemic functional linguistics, and action. So that is a very long answer to a very long title. Well, I think the first part is it, it uses systemic functional linguistics, and that is um, a perspective on language um, and learning that fits so well with a Vygotskyan perspective of development. It really fits well with sort of a transformative um, Pablo Freudian uh, perspective on, on, on using language um, to fundamentally understand yourself and the other in broader context from a real sort of critical perspective. But SFL is a little dense, um, so I think what stand, my book stands out is because I'm using the voices of teacher, every chapter starts with the voice of a teacher, a problem, and then situates uh, sort of a little bit of background and then provides a, a, a conceptual tool from systemic functional linguistics that then gets put into action. Um, hence the title. So uh, the, um, the first couple chapters set up the problem, again using work of teachers um, that I've worked with in urban schools um, for the last 20 years. Um, so it's very much a theory to practice, uh, so praxis. Um, it is a theoretical book, it, it is a, it will, it's, it's not the kind of book that's going to be a how, what do I do on Monday, um, or 10 best steps to an effective SFL lesson. It, it really gives some teachers some background um, on uh, certainly um, systemic functional linguistics, coupling that with Vygotsky, coupling that with the social justice perspective, and then each chapter um, uh, also ha ends with some um, praxis questions where teachers can actually, pre-service teachers um, and teachers, can can take a concept that was introduced and then go go use it go use it in their um, predominantly in a pre-service program um, to go and be in a school collect a little bit of data do some observations so that they can make whatever the theoretical concept is come alive in their own um, professional development and in the lives of a of kids and in a context of a of a school, often schools, if you're working with English language learners, where they they're not well funded, they're not well resourced. Teachers are under enormous amount of pressure. So, I think the book stands out because of the theory. One, it's dealing with systemic functional linguistics, theory to practice, and very much geared towards um, a pre-service. Uh, or teacher or teacher education audience so people can be guided in using this, these tools, these conceptual tools, um, to do work in, in schools. Well, I think it has a broad audience. Um, it certainly would be useful in a pre-service teacher program. It's useful in a, a um, in uh, working with in-service teachers. I think it's useful also for graduate students who are new to using systemic functional linguistics, case study analysis, qualitative research in classrooms. So I think it has a wide appeal. The data is from, that's in the book, um, that's analyzed with teachers, comes from elementary and secondary um, classrooms, and it also has uh, different content areas. So. English language arts, math, science, social studies, all are represented in, in the data chapters. I think the main uh, audience for this might be in states where teachers are mandated, pre-service teachers are mandated to have a course in how to work with English language learners. I know in many states, given the disparity, the equity gap, in how English language learners are faring in public schools, this has been a mandate. Uh, and many uh, colleges of education have people who are asked to teach a course uh, around teaching academic literacy to English language learners, but they really haven't been prepared to do that. And there isn't a book out there that really hits all of the standards necessarily that they need to do. So I really modeled this after a course I've designed at the University of Massachusetts for pre and in-service teachers to meet that need, um, doing it with systemic functionalists.